All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Friday. Today is May 15th. It's uh, just a little bit after 1230 East Coast time here in Florida. I'm down here in Fort Lauderdale. It's a rainy day outside, uh, so it's a perfect day to be inside and talking to you. And uh, we are here for episode uh, number 119 of Automation Unplugged, brought to you by my day job at One Firefly. I know a few of you are wondering, do I have any other clothes? Uh, the answer is uh, maybe. I'll just have to keep you guessing because I just like wearing my One Firefly gear. And uh, in terms of my my hat, it's a it's a sad state of affairs up there. I desperately need a haircut, so uh, the one the one firefly hat is uh, simply the the easy way to go. Uh, if you are out there uh, watching or listening live, uh, please give us a like. Uh, drop into the comments. Let me know where you're coming to us from, and uh, and as I bring in my guest. Uh, definitely uh, help us understand what questions you might have and uh, what you'd like to learn more about. Don't be shy. So uh, definitely have fun interacting. Uh, I, I'm noticing Chris Gamble. He's already confused me because he says it's Friday, the 4 12th of May. Um, I don't know, Chris, you're gonna have to explain that one. I'm sure there's some uh, comedy to that answer, but I have no idea what that means. Uh, I think it's the 15th of May, but uh, please do tell. And uh, all right, gang, well, let's, let's jump into it. Uh, show 119 guest, Matt DeVance, the one and only, uh, he's a founder of DeVance Electronic Lifestyles out of Dallas, Texas. A uh, longtime uh, friend and uh, customer of One Firefly, and and he and I have had the pleasure. Well, I won't, I don't know if he feels this way, but I know I feel this way. I've had the pleasure of knowing he and his wife Dana uh, for for many years now. Actually, at the we founded our businesses, uh, and and our our businesses have had a similar growth trajectory, um, really since the the early two thousands. So. Uh, yeah, and Kendall just dropped a note. She says, a special Friday edition. Hey, Matt, Dana, Wade, and team. That is right. So, and it is all about team, and we're going to talk about team and culture and lots of fun topics with Matt. So let me go ahead and bring him in. I know you guys are here to hear uh, from him. So let's let's do that. Matt, how's it going, sir? Going great. How are you doing? I am doing super duper. Oh. I see all sorts of wood, uh, looks like acoustical doodads there on the wall behind you. So where, where are you coming to us from? Uh, Dallas, Texas, and I'm in our home theater and our showroom. So that's uh, some walnut diffusers we had made for our, our uh, theater. Awesome. So that is, that's real wood. That's not foam. It is. That's correct. Yeah, that is that is beautiful, and we are, we already have folks. Man, we you you got drawing quite the audience here, Matt. Uh, we've got lots of folks uh, saying hello. We got Matt Lean. Uh, weren't there any other devances you could have on the show besides Matt? I think Matt wanted Dana to be the guest on the show. Yeah. Uh, I next time, Matt, we'll have Dana. Maybe she'll mess, make a guest appearance. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and then Dana actually is here commenting. She says, Hey, Kendall. And, uh, let me give a few more shout outs. Tina says, welcome Matt, uh, from just down the road in Austin. Love so Austin. Tina Austin is awesome. Uh, lots of shout outs. So I'm going to bring them in over the course of the interview. I have a feeling we're going to have a pretty dynamic chat. Awesome. Um, Matt, how long have you and I known each other? I think we met each other. I want to say it was probably some right, maybe 2009, 2010, maybe. That sounds that sounds right ish. I started Firefly Design Group back in 07. Right. And we were doing the drawing and the project engineering thing, which I think is, you know, who introduced us? Look what I got right here. Wow. Holy cow. You have Remember a that? legacy. Yeah. Look at that. That is the sales portfolio. Holy yeah. moly. That you guys did for us back in the day. 
Uh, we would have done that probably around 09 or 10 or 11, something like that. Right. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, I think Troy Morgan uh, yep. there out of Dallas, I, I want to say he introduced us. That is correct. Yeah, Troy was a Crestron, still is a Crestron programmer uh, right. there with Pantech Design. Yep. All right. Uh, as I always love to do, I have a, a whole list of topics um, that are, are going to be fun for our audience, uh, I think, to hear your take on. But before I go there, I always love to hear the origin story. And so do you mind sharing? If we go in the way, way back machine, yeah. you know, 25 years plus, what were you doing and how did you end up landing in this custom integration space? Sure. Um, the way back story really is uh, back when I was probably five, six, seven years old. My, my father was in the Air Force and we were stationed in Omaha, Nebraska. And in Omaha, you have basements. So mm -hmm. his kind of, I say it now as a side hustle. So what we know it as uh, he would repair electronics out of the basement uh, as a, kind of a hobby slash a little bit of way to earn a little extra money. He was one of the first uh, to get into the Tandy computers, Commodore VIC-20, the Commodore 64, those first generation computers. Uh, but that really kind of piqued my interest in audio video, if you will, because I remember him repairing VCRs and um, uh, speakers and receivers. And he was in the military, so he was he was in the military in some capacity, and this was like his side hustle, this was his side gig? Correct. Yeah, so during the day, you know, he'd go off to base and be there all day long, and then at night, be fixing things, taking things apart, putting them together. And uh, I always loved watching, you know, all that. Uh, I got to really enjoy the smell of solder. Um, sure soldering stuff all the time. And, um, so it just, what, what, how did he learn to do that? Was he an engineer by education or by hobby? Like how uh, did he know to do that? Through the military. He did, okay. he did a lot of that in the mil military. Okay. So uh, that just really piqued my interest. And, and so I got to take things apart, put things back together. Uh, I love working with my hands. And, and so that really got me into, uh, the industry, if you will, at an early age. And then when high school kind of rolled around, I, I really got into audio systems and cars and I had a truck and I did my own system in there and I competed in IASCA events. And then next thing you know, I had people in high school wanting me to make systems for them or install stuff for them. So I did that um, and I really enjoyed it. And that got me into audio and, and just enjoying you know, music in general. I, I know of the IASCA stuff, but I don't know it exactly. Like when you were designing a car audio system and you were competing, yeah. what were you compete? What were you trying to achieve? Like what would win you an award? Sure. Uh, a lot of the people that were competing would compete in the DB category, which is just how loud is your bass, right? You know, how much, how, how many DBs can you have in a car? Uh, and I remember one car had, I want to say 155 DB, which just. That would like kill you if you were oh, inside yeah. that car, would it yeah. not? <laughs> you know, oh, my, it, it rattles your eyes. Uh, and, but that wasn't what I was going for. I was one going in uh, SQ, which is sound quality. So I was going for, I wanted it to sound as realistically as possible as you could in that small environment, which is actually awful for acoustics. I see. So you were trying to get the highs, lows, and mids. There was some standard for good audio, or I guess you would always know the quality of the, the source and you were, they were testing you for your ability to reproduce that accurately. Correct. Yeah. And so that was yeah. really my passion on the car audio side was the sound quality. At the, I felt like anybody could do bass and make things really loud, but it's much more of a challenge to make it sound really good in an awful environment. Got it. And you, you mentioned computers. Did, did you guys also like build computers, you know, back in the day or? Yeah, my dad did for sure. I mean, he built a lot of them and that's his business today. And, and he's starting to kind of slow it down a little bit, but he's, he's had his own business building the software programs, building computers. He does a lot of our computer stuff in our office to, for us today still. Did you ever so, go to the old computer shows? Like I remember as a kid, my dad was a computer nerd and he would, you know, I remember it was the big deal when the computer show came to the Coliseum yeah. and we would go and you'd get all the vendors selling the video cards and the audio cards. And I, I know for our young people listening, they're like, what are they talking about? Right. But like, that was how you'd build a computer back in the day is you'd go That's buy all your pieces and parts. 
That's right. Yeah, we did that. And it was on Saturdays. We get up early Saturday morning and we go down. Um, it was downtown Dallas and it was one, under one of the bridges, but it was always every Saturday. And you go there and they would set up all these vendors would have all this stuff set up and you can just walk through. And it was just hundreds and hundreds of people there trying to sell, you know, uh, hard drives and computer cases and everything you could even think of. And I, so I remember. I remember when my dad built my first computer and, and we got a 40 megabyte hard drive. Wow. And that was a big deal. Yeah. I, I have no idea what you can put on a 40 megabyte hard drive, but it can't be much. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> One photo. That, that, and where did you transition? So you, you were into the car audio and then how did you land in the, the home, uh, you know, audio video side of the equation? Sure. Yeah. I started working for a company that did car audio installs. That's what they were known for. And I was selling the car audio installs and they also did home audio. And one day they needed somebody to help them with a home audio install. And I was there. And so I got elected and got to get out and see it. And my eyes were opened and, and it was amazing how I realized the potential of a home audio system as opposed to a car audio system. You're no longer limited by this small space. Now you can do almost anything. And so that really got me involved with it. And that's what got me going on the home audio side. And that was early 90s. Got it. So early 90s and and then in the early 2000s-ish, yeah. you decided to, to leave the, the store that you were in. What, what store was it? It was home entertainment. So it was here in Dallas, Texas. It was a store called Home Entertainment. Uh, them and Hillcrest High Fidelity were kind of the big competitors of each other. I think there was three stores here in Dallas and they had uh, four stores in Houston. It was uh, Roberta Lewis was one of the owners, Joe Tucker um, or um, Joe Brown. And uh, they Rick ended up getting bought by Tweeter. Correct. Right? Yep. Tweeter bought them, decided their model was a different direction than what I was used to and accustomed to, which was custom and building systems for clients from the ground up. And, and that was not really what they were going for anymore. And so it was time for me to kind of move on. Uh, it was it was beneficial. I got to do a little bit of management and they moved me into management. I was able to be an assistant manager. I was able to be a manager. So it helped me a little bit with my people skills uh, during mm -hmm. that time. But I realized that my passion was really in the design of a custom system and building it from the ground up. And, and that was just not something they were really interested in at the time. So it was pretty easy for me to, to go out on my own. A lot of clients had my cell phone number. They were always calling me already. They were sending friends and family to me already via my phone. So I kind of had my own business going already, even though I was working for home entertainment, I was taking care of them as if they were my client, not home entertainment's client. And so that transition when I left, was a pretty smooth transition and pretty easy transition because my phone just didn't stop ringing. And from that point on, I just, okay, I'm a business owner. So you've been running you, you with your wife, Dana, yes, have been running Devance electronic lifestyles all the way back since Oh two. Correct. Yeah. I started it in an Oh two. She didn't join the company until Oh seven. Okay. So I was, it was me and one guy working out of my house. I was selling, he was installing, I was doing all the bookkeeping, paying all the vendors, doing my taxes, you know, everything, one man shop. And then I go out and help him install sometimes too, but majority of time he would install and I would sell. And my wife eventually said, you're, this is getting too big for you to be able to handle by yourself. I'm come, I'm quitting my job. I'm coming to help you. And she was the catalyst to really get us out of the house, get us into an office, and start getting people in place that can do the things that is not really my forte, like the bookkeeping and, you know, ordering product and things of that nature. So she was the catalyst of really trying to get us to grow our team. I was just on a conference call uh, yesterday with a, a company out of a small operation out of Italy and uh with his brother uh, the out of the uk with his brother out of italy and he was in that kind of one man operation trying to figure out how to 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 grow yeah and my answer was you you need you need to be able to delegate bring people into your orbit and then figure out what you're best at and 
delegate those things you're not best at. Right. And it sounds like that's what Dana was able to help you see or, or start to institute. She, yeah, she really did a great job with helping me see it. That's a good way to phrase it. And, and once I really started seeing it, uh, then the challenge became just finding the talent and getting the talent in here that uh, has the skill set and the mindset and, and the thought process that's kind of on par with your thought process so that you can just let them do what they're good at and not micromanage and trust that they're the right person. Yeah, that makes sense. What What does your business look like today? Just high level. Uh, are you doing residential work, commercial work? And, uh, and what is your day-to-day -day responsibility? I know you're the, you're the owner of the business, but what does your day-to-day -day life look like in, in advance today? Sure. Yeah. Over the past couple of years, we've kind of morphed a little bit more into the commercial side of things than resi. Uh, we, uh, for a long time, we were probably 70, 30 residential and mm -hmm. the 30% commercial was a lot of our clients would, you know, call us in cause they were owners of businesses and we'd go in and do their boardrooms and, we would do a restaurant because they opened a restaurant we've done yoga studios, you know, all those type of things where it was directly associated with our client doing the residential project. Today, we've now gotten a little bit more into the commercial side of things. So I would say we're getting close to a 50 50 split. Um, I like the commercial side of things a lot because uh, there's a lot of the emotion is taking out of the whole sale, if you will, and the whole project. You don't have a homeowner that's really emotional about the experience and how it's going to turn out and and all the after stuff it's more of a business and it's just used a certain time of day and so um i really like that transition but we've gotten good people on board that can handle and manage that so i'm not having to do it as much anymore so my involvement has really shifted over the past year or so to be more of a mentor uh, we have some young people here that are just fantastic people and just amazing at what they do. And I love seeing their uh, development. And I love being able to be here for them to answer questions or guide them through certain scenarios when they pop up and, and, but empower them at the same time to not only make a mistake and learn from it, but, you know, do well and, and learn from that also, and just give them the tools I can over my, you know, years of experience and let them be more of the people that are running the company. So we are, we're recording this here in May 15th, 2020, and uh, there's still yeah. a global pandemic going around. I've heard rumors of it. I occasionally will get whispers of it on the news, although I try not to watch the news. Yeah. And uh, how, how is it affecting you guys? How, how's your team? How's your family? How's business? Yeah. Um, team wise, I, I, that's a, a real good, uh, question I, I feel because I think that's the core of what we're going through right now. Um, I was able to been doing this long enough, obviously went through nine 11 back in 2001, went through the financial crisis back in 08, 09. And then now this is kind of our third really big, uh, crisis, if you will. And I learned a lot through both of those incidences and, um, it's helped me, as a business owner, be a little more calm, be a little more um, stable, be less, you know, knee jerk reaction and not just freak out with what's going on. And, and what, what are some of those lessons? Like, let, let's say 9-11 or the Great Recession of 09 and 10. Like, what are some of the takeaways that maybe uh, I, and I can, and I can tell you for myself, the things I did wrong that I'm trying to do better this time. Yeah. What, what are some of those examples for you perhaps? Uh, after 2001 and not when a line 11 hit, you know, one of the things that, uh, really became uh, predominant for me in people's lives is that they really wanted to make sure that their families were kept safe in their own environments. And, uh, it was almost a competition between families of, who could have the house that has all the entertainment built into it to where the kids want to go to that house so that mm. they watch their own children, you know, and, and know where they are and what they're doing and that kind of thing. Um, so it was kind of a blessing that people really were understanding that their home now is, is a safe spot, right? It, it's some place that we're going to invest in because it's my safe place. And in uh, 0809, 
fortunately, the Dallas Fort Worth area, um, with the way it spread out, the economy spread out here, it's not really focused on oil. It's not really focused on the medical side of things. It's really spread out. Um, this community really just kind of kept going and didn't really miss a beat. Da- Dallas is an amazing market. Not D- Dallas, and then just the whole state of Texas. Yeah. It's it's like its own micro economy in the United States. And I'm I'm saying that from a perspective. I work with people throughout the world and then throughout North America. And then there's Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and it really must be rather uh, fun to be doing business in the state of Texas in such a special economy. I definitely love it. And you're right. You know, I go to a lot of events, whether it's a pro source event or CEDIA event or whatever, and you get to meet people from all over the country and all over the world. And you get to meet people from your own state, right? And it is true when you're talking to people that aren't in Texas and how they talk and how they speak and what's going on with them. And then you talk about or talk to somebody that is in Texas. It's a totally different, totally realm. different conversation. Yeah, <laughs> it, it it's amazing. So, but I interrupted you. You were saying in '09 and '10, and then I I, I jumped in. So please uh, continue. Hey, uh, so in '08 '09, um, as a matter of fact, we were hiring. Uh, during that downtime and we were hiring more people. We had a ton of business going on a lot of big projects. You were hiring during the great recession. Yes. Yeah. We had uh, started a couple of really big projects. One of them turned out to be when it was all said and done about a million five. And those people didn't miss a beat on their projects. They just kept going. They're like, we're not stopping. We're not letting this slow us down. We're going to keep going. And that was what really helped us through 08, 09. And, and we were able to hire people that needed jobs, get them on board with us because we needed people to help us do these projects. And so we learned a lot through that on just maintaining the course, right? Don't deviate. Don't uh, try to let outside distractions determine how you're going to run your own business. It's so easy to do, you know, because you, especially like you're saying, you don't watch the news. I was watching a lot of the news recently when this you know, pandemic got kicked off just for knowledge. But uh, over the past week or so, I've kind of relaxed that because it really does start to affect your mindset and it really does start to affect. Maybe it is terrible outside. Maybe I, I maybe the fact that we're busy and doing well, maybe this is an illusion. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. Hear all these different things that can get into your mind and your thought process. And as a business owner, you need to be able to stay focused. You need to be able to stay the course and not let all these outside um, distractions, if you will, determine the direction of your company. So 0809 helped me with that a lot. So now that we're going through this now, it's scary, but the main difference is the world's going through this. Those other two, it was really just the US that had to deal with it. This one, the whole world is now impacted and going through it. And uh, I feel that even though we're going through it and we've started to slow a little bit, we've had some people put the brakes on their projects. We've had some that are not putting the brakes on the projects and we're really, we're still plowing through them. Uh, but we have seen it slow down a little bit. We're not going to be concerned about it. We're still going to stay the course. We still know that your services that you provide us with all the marketing that you do for us, the new website you just did for us, that's all going to be very vital right now during this time to get us out there uh, and help our clients because when people get to the point of, of kind of getting back to things, I feel like they're going to really invest in their homes again, invest in their offices again, and, and really want to be prepared if it happens again. Yeah. I, 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 you, you gave us a very nice shameless plug, which I will graciously accept. And, uh, so I'm, I just put on the screen there, your website, um, and I'll, I'll just, I'll kind of cruise through that a little bit as, um, as you're, you're talking, but I, I am curious, what are, I, I have an assumption, uh, I'm, I'm feeling better and better about this assumption by the day. Yeah. And that is that, uh, as folks are spending more time in their homes than they probably ever have that there's going to be a demand for the toys in the home that we provide as an industry, the music, the, the, the networking, the audio video and the control. Uh, Do you see like, that's an assumption I have. And I know that some of my customers, maybe many are very busy. Are you seeing that? 
And do you believe that that is like, let's say there's a second wave, like let's just run worst case. Yeah. Let's say there's a second wave of this thing. And then maybe a third wave. Like sure. if you look back to the Spanish flu, right. it came in multiple waves. Sure. Um, all that means is our consumers are going to be spending more and more time in their homes. Right. So it seems logical that you would be in demand. Sure. We as an industry would be in demand. What What are you seeing? Yeah, we're definitely seeing that. We're seeing um, projects that we might have uh, been talking with a client and they put the project on hold or they decided they weren't going to do it right now. Maybe something else you know, came up or whatever. But we've been getting feedback from those clients now saying, I wish I would have gone ahead and, and did that with you because now I'm stuck in my house and I would have liked to have had the better music or I would have liked to have had the faster internet speeds or I would have liked to have had this media room already done that I've just decided to put off. Um, and I think you're right. I think people, it, especially if it's going to come back multiple times, people really are going to start investing more into their homes because especially if you think about a media room or a theater, the goal of that is technically to transport you to a different time or a different space or a different, you know, change your, your mindset. Um, and I know that it, it does that for myself and my wife, you know, at night when we want to have a different mindset other than thinking about what's going on around us every day in the world. I, I want to get away from that and we can turn on a movie and it achieves that. We watched uh, last night a stupid movie, Zombieland. <laughs> Oh, I watched uh, the Z one with Brad Pitt. Uh, yeah. Right when this whole thing went down and uh, somebody helped me out in the comments. What's that movie called? Like Zombie Z or I don't know. Right. So I mean, it, that was one of those things, right? It's not zombie land is not a go-to movie. Like, oh my goodness, you got to see this movie. Right. But yeah. it was one of those movies where you're, you don't really have to think it's going to kind of make you laugh. It's silly and it gets your mind off of everything that's kind of going on around you. And I think, more and more people are going to understand that now and want to invest in that um, in their homes. Now, so I, I now speaking of the pandemic, and I, I know that you guys have a beautiful showroom because I, I went there myself this past uh, fall and yeah. I'm going to put one of the, this is a, a little corner of your space. Sure. And there's this spectacular uh, Macintosh and I think that's B&W towers. Yeah. Um, so you have a gorgeous space loaded Thank with fantastic gear. Thank you. How do you see the demonstration experience change, if at all? Sure. Um, I think more and more people are going to want to have an experience. They're going to want to be able to go into a facility, especially if they're going to invest the money now into a media room, they're going to want to experience a media room. And I think it, it'll be better for us as integrators because we'll be able to show some fantastic experiences and have people say, perfect, I want it. This is exactly what I need in my house. So if something happens again, a second, third wave or whatever other, you know, something that could come along that's going to make me and my family be in the home for long periods of time. This will be something that I can do with my family and it can be a getaway at the same time. Because you think about the vacations that aren't being taken right now, all the extra stuff that- I don't think anyone's going to go on vacation this year. Right. And you think about that. So what is your release as a family? I mean, it was going on a vacation. It was going somewhere. It was transporting yourself to a different time or a different place. And if you can't do that by physically going somewhere, I think people are going to see that and recognize that and say, let's do that in our home. Let's make that a reality. So if we are here and we have to be here, we can kind of do that in our own home. Now, I have to give you a very public thank you, Matt, to you and your team, because you helped one Firefly and you helped the industry at large. And, and many do not know this. So I'm going to disclose a little secret. Uh, and that is that you, uh, so we won Firefly, we're producing websites. And last year we produced a website called, um, we brand it called Mercury Pro. And in that website product, we're also doing video shoots, which is a, a new, a new ambition, a new project of ours. We started doing this last year. And if we're going to shoot, uh, you know, uh, I say models, I mean, we're hiring families, you know, husband and wives, kids, different demographics. 
and we're, we're renting out beautiful homes and we're loading them with gear and we're videoing that for marketing assets, that means I actually need the beautiful gear. Yeah. And so I was going to be doing a shoot in, in Dallas and I called you yep. and I said, Matt, I need your help. You said, Ron, what do you need? I said, I need beautiful gear. And you said, well, come on over and pick it up. Yep. And so I'm going to, I'm going to show, put on the screen here, uh, a couple of images, uh, and I'll do it this way that we were able to capture. And then I'll, I'll come over to the screen and show how this is realized. But this, right. what is this here? This is a Macintosh setup over on the bookshelf. Correct. Yeah. A little Macintosh, um, executive system, if you will, some speakers and a lamp of fire and you can hook up a, you know, some kind of streaming device to it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an impressive little system for what it is, to be honest with you. It's, it's beautiful. So we were able, to, and by the way, I'm showing stills, but these are all uh, videos that are, are uh, in some cases visible on your website. Uh, yeah. But what was the donation and, and really the philanthropy here is these videos are going to be on integrator sites around the world. And uh, that's made possible when good partners of ours help us help us with gear so that we can show it off. Um, here's that same room, but a different look. Yeah, some BMW speakers in the background. Yep. So we got what? What are what are those called? That's called a, a tower, a bookshelf speaker, or that's is that a tower speaker? That's their uh, their top of the line, uh, the eight hundred fives. So it's a small little bookshelf speaker, but just sounds fantastic for for what it is. It's you put some good power behind it, and you can really enjoy some music. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show one more here. So this is a, a scene. We had uh, these these folks sitting over here on the sofa, you know, having their nice cocktail. Right. And what what tower speakers are those? Those are the B and W seven hundred two S's. So it's the one step down from their eight hundred series, which is their top of the line. So it's the one step down from those. Got it. And uh, I'm I'm now gonna come back over to the. Let me see if I can find my screen. And so now I'm gonna I'm just gonna show the audience here. I know for the podcast, I'm I'm having to verbally. I'll try to verbally describe this but I'm just going to show a quick video to show how some of these speakers are, are then being realized. And again, uh, big thanks Matt to you and your team for letting us borrow this gear so that we could include it in our, our video shoots. Yeah. Um, I'll give all the credit to Kalen here. He was the one that kind of got them ready for you and helped you get them and got them back and took care of them. Uh, that wasn't on me. I'll give him all the credit uh, and my team. They, they, got the stuff ready for you. So I really appreciate them doing that. Awesome. Great job. And Kalen, you were awesome, uh, both in the pickup and the, 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 the drop off of that gear. And, uh, I'm going to, uh, Matt, if you don't mind, I'm going to give a few people shout outs here that are, are commenting. Awesome. Um, Matt lean is, he has a question for you. He's saying, how much do you think your showroom raises your average project ticket? So does it make an impact on the dollar value of your projects? Sure, I, I, I definitely believe it does. And I know it does. Uh, that a lot of what a showroom can do for you, other than just showing product, product itself, is it gives you validity in the industry. It gives you some credibility that um, what you say you can do, you can do. Without a showroom, you can meet a client. And I did it for a long time. And, and uh, I think I was blessed with the gift of Gab, obviously, where I can get people feeling comfortable to do business with me. But I sold a lot of product without even having a showroom. But once I had that showroom, it definitely became much easier because it's it solidified my capabilities and what I can do and what I can achieve and what I can do for them and achieve in their own home. So I would say at a minimum, um, it's raised at least 10% of, you know, your projects. When you get somebody in your space and you can show them what you do, you might not sell them certain things in your showroom that you've spent a lot of money on, uh, but they'll see it and that'll be in their head. And what that does is if it wows them, you've gained their trust, you've gained their confidence. So now going forward, when you make recommendations on, on product or a way to do something, they're going to be more open to listening to you because they've physically seen with their own eyes your capabilities. So they have that that trust in you. 
That makes a lot of sense. By the way, Liz Sizemore helped me out here. It is uh, a yeah. world 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 war Z. If you're looking for the perfect pandemic inspiration movie, watch war war Z. Right. I, I, I watched that back in March and it was, uh, it felt very much on theme. Right. Uh, and then Stephanie Johnson, she says, I don't think there's anyone with bigger hearts than Matt and Dana. Uh, but then I, I think your friend Carl shot her down and says, Matt is heartless on the pool table. <laughs> uh, cruel, mean, and pure. <laughs> well, so try. That's, that's a hobby of mine. And I've known Carl for a long time from uh, playing pool for over 20 years in this, in this area as well. And that's, that's my kind of getaway. No, that's fun. So I, I know that in, in just chatting with you prior to going live, Matt, um, some of the words and the language you were using, uh, I, I really connected with as it relates to the, your approach to your team and company culture. And I, I asked, I didn't know this, but I, I just said, have you heard of a book called Traction? And you said, yes, Ron, we're following the Traction EOS system yes. here at Devance. And you know, one Firefly start adopted this methodology back uh, last summer, and we've been kind of on a a path of improving our business and operations and processes based on that. Do you mind sharing with the audience what is that and what does it mean to you, and maybe even how has it changed how you look at running your business? Sure. Yeah, uh, I'll give credit to my wife Dana and our CFO Stephanie when they went to a ProSource event last year in Tennessee. Um, they got to see traction is, is called EOS, which is a, I think it's entrepreneurial operating system. That's right. And so they got to see that at, uh, the pro source event and brought it back and said, we need to implement this. And in talking to them of why we need to implement it, basically what it did is it brought structure to the company. It brought structure to our meetings. So it wasn't just random meeting meetings that would pop up and have no direction and we would be all over the map. And um, another thing that it really brought to us is we have a, uh, a team that's kind of our management team and it gets us all together and it gets us all on the same page so that we all know our goals. We all know what the company's goals are, what we're trying to achieve in one year, three year, five year, 10 year, so that we all have that same mindset and like thought process. Um, Stephanie and Dana have just, they've been the catalyst of implementing it. They're reading the books, they're watching the videos, they've made it happen. Um, and that has been tremendous for us. It has, it gives us something to set our sights on. It gives us a way to be focused that we didn't have before, you know, before that we were just kind of like, okay, yeah, it'd be cool to, to do $5 million a year, or it'd be cool to have 15 employees or it'd be cool, you know, but there was no real direction on how do you achieve that? How do you get to that point? And when we got EOS and, and, and traction, it helped us kind of have a format of how to get to those goals and how to structure your company so that it's not just chaos every day. There is actually, you know, a meaning to everything you're doing. Do you mind t tell the, the audience here, how do you solve problems now? So let's just say there's a problem. Sure. What's the process? Because this is, a, by the way, folks, this is a, an EOS traction methodology here. So how do you solve a problem now? So when we have our management meeting and we have ours every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., it's an hour and 40 minutes and it has a structure to it. So uh, at the beginning of the meeting, we all go around the table and we all say some good news. because It's always good to start off on a positive. So we all say some good news to each other. Uh, and it could be something as simple as I had a great weekend or I was in the sun or, you know, who knows what. Um, and, and that great news is just a good, positive way to start the meeting off. And then as the meeting continues, <clears throat> it's broken up in sections and you can in that a certain section say we have an issue. OK, well, is that issue with something internally? Or is it like an employee issue or is it a client issue or is it a vendor issue? And so that issue gets brought to the table. And if it's something we can kind of discuss within maybe five minutes and come up with a solution, great. We've discussed it. We've knocked it off. We've got a solution. Now we now it's just making that solution happen. If it's something that needs more uh, conversation and a little more detail, we push that into a different section of the meeting that's designed to have a longer uh, discussion time. Maybe it's 30 minutes or 45 minutes. I'm trying to remember what that was. 20 minutes per issue. 
20 minutes per issue. So yeah. then you put it off to that issue and then you can sit and really get into that issue because it needed some more talk. And, but the goal is to come up with a solution. How do I solve this problem? And when you're done with that, you should have a solve to that problem. Yeah. So the, the, that process is called the IDS process. Yeah. You, you define it, you discuss it and then you solve it and then you move on. Right. Identify, and discuss and solve. I, correct. Yeah. There you go. Identify, discuss and solve. Yeah. And uh, just as simple as that might sound folks, you and your, your team there, your leadership team in that meeting or, or your team at large in that meeting, knowing there's a structure and you're not just going to talk in circles. You're not going to restate the problem 18 different ways. You're going to agree on what the problem is and then you're going to, you're going to IDS it. It's, it is, it's amazingly refreshing. I think one of the things that it really does is it empowers your team. You know, in those meetings, I'm not the one sitting there making these decisions. I'm not saying we're going to do this or we're going to do that. It's more of the team. And I'll sit back majority of the times and not speak on purpose because I want the team to make these decisions. I want to know what their resolve is going to be. And it empowers them to know they can make decisions and make them on their own and implement. They don't need me to make the decision for them. And you and I have over the years talked about this and and to talk to you now, you know, prior to going live and now that we're live around, you know, in the past, we had the weight of the world on your shoulders and on mine yeah. as we were running our businesses. And today, uh I feel more relaxed, at peace, confident than ever. And it's because I have an amazing team around me right. that is helping me run the company. Hundred percent. And you, you were telling me the same. Yep. Yeah. It's amazing when you get good people and you get the right people in the right position, what they can do, and you let them do it. You know, you don't micromanage them. You don't, uh, you know, tell them how to do their job. You guide them and you give them some direction sometimes, and you give them some coaching sometimes. On here, it was how I did it when I had this issue or when I experienced this and, and give them those, those, uh, you know, tidbits, but let them make their own mistakes, let them make their own successes and appraise them for those successes. And then when the mistake comes, okay, let's learn from it. How do we not do this again? What did you learn from that mistake? And, um, empower them. And, and with our people that we currently have, it's the best team we've ever had. And, I am more relaxed because I know the team can handle whatever comes their way. They have the, the ability and the skill set to make decisions. They don't have to say, well, we got to talk to the boss and let him make this decision. More often than not, they can make it and then come to me and say, here was the problem. Here's what we did to resolve it. It's all good. And that is the most satisfying feeling you can ever have because you're just like, awesome. You know, I didn't have to, I didn't have to be the one that solved the problem anymore. They, they can do it. No better way to cruise into a weekend than, yeah. than than your team telling you about the problem, telling you how it was solved, and uh, they were just letting you know. Yeah, it's great. No. A amen, um, Matt. We are uh, we're running short on time, uh, and I, I did want to give just a few more shout outs. By the way, I saw Eddie. You were you were hanging out watching. Thanks, buddy. Eddie was on the show just recently. It was I saw his? That was a good show. It, it was a lot of fun. He and I, uh, well, so I'll, I'll ask you the controversial question that I, I asked him. I don't know how controversial it is. Do you, do you think Cedia, the expo event is going to happen this year? Probably not. Um, you know, they, they, there's still just too many questions out there that need answers before. I think people are going to be comfortable getting back together in a large group. So do, do you I, think, so I just received an announcement uh, that they're going to hold it and it's okay. now been reduced to two days. Okay. I'm still kept skeptical. It's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, do you think if they still hold the show that they, do you think it's the right thing to do? Should they hold the show? Is it the right thing to do? It's hard to say now, you know, because we need more answers, right. Of, of what's really going on with, um, the, the virus? Is it getting better? Are we getting better? Or, or is it going away? That kind of thing. Uh, I would probably be better to answer that question maybe two months prior to that, as opposed to now, because I just, it would be speculation. And if I had to speculate it as of today, I would say probably it'd be better not to have it. Just go ahead and cancel it. Don't let people 
you know, do deposits and and get their hopes up and do all the stuff um, based Think on Think about it. all the money the vendors have to spend right. to yeah. be at a show properly. Yeah. You know, and, and why have them go through that extra stress right now of trying to prepare for a show that might not even happen? So I think it would be better off on at least the vendor side of things to say, hey, let's let's we'll pass this year. We'll tackle it harder next year. Let yeah. you guys get your business under control and let you really focus on that, because, you know, this first part of this year has just been kind of shot. Right. So let them get another three quarters under them and really get back to what they were doing before this happened and get more of a comfort zone before trying to add extra stress to them to, to now put together a show. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I don't think it's too controversial because that sounds so darn logical. Right. Um, but yet it's still hanging out there. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll have to watch and see what happens. Matt, I, I, I always love to close with, um, if you are game, there's folks listening, there's people yeah. watching live for sure. And there's folks that are going to watch later or they're going to listen to the podcast and, um, and maybe they are they're they're They have challenges, you know, dealing with, a. they haven't been through the battles that you've been through right. in terms of all these opportunities to learn. This is their battle. They're going to remember and reference in their future career. Yeah. You have any advice for them how to get through it? Uh Oh, what do you got there? Small business for dummies. Okay. I, I didn't know such a book existed, but it makes sense. <laughs> No, I, I got this probably 20 years ago. Um, um, no, I think really you got to have faith, you know, and, and it's not necessarily um, you don't have to be religious to have faith, but you have to have faith in society. You have to have faith in the world in general that um, we're all going to get through whatever comes at us and learn from it and learn how to, uh, especially if you're the uh, the owner of your business or the the leader in your industry, whatever it may be, that you uh, understand kind of what's going on around you and just sometimes you just got to be calm and listen before making decisions you don't want to make any kind of uh, knee-jerk reactions to things and and maybe let things present themselves um, which might take a little more time uh, so i would just recommend uh, from what i've experienced going through 9 11 and 08 09 is to remain patient remain calm um, try to laugh Try to enjoy, you know, who you're with. Try to enjoy your teammates that you're around. Make them laugh. Have fun with them. You were telling me that your pets at home have really been uh, comforting. For yeah. Both you and Dana. Uh, we have a, a dog we adopted a couple of years ago, and he is just a character. And every morning I get up, he makes me laugh, you know, and I think that's going to be key to this time is things can seem so dire and so stressful. And um, so, so many people get focused on that, that it's, it's not healthy. So you need to laugh. Uh, you need to have fun. You need to remember that uh, we're going to get through this and we're going to get on the other side of it and, and we'll have to adapt. That's fine. And, and you can adapt. And but then remember just to have fun. Make your team have fun and don't let the stresses of, of everything that's going on around us dictate how your company should react and, and respond and be. Yeah. Amen. I, I was I saw a, a meme recently and then I researched it a little further. And it was uh, around a survey of how many people want to stay working from home when this is all said and done. And there was a pretty strong correlation between the people that said they wanted to continue working from home and those that had pets at home. Yeah. It was almost a one for one correlation. And uh, I, I know that that my dog, Charlotte, I, I've been working from home for a long time. But uh, she she's really enjoyed having my son home from school every day because he's doing the remote learning. Right. So uh, if she has her vote, I know she doesn't want Max to ever go back to school. She just wants him to stay homeschooling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dogs are great, you know, for for mental clarity and being able to relax when you're around them. If you're stressed, you can go up and hug them or play ball or something like that. That's why I love dogs so much. And my wife loves dogs and we rescue and and those type of things. But uh, you got to find something in your life that will give you some calmness and relaxation when you're being embarded. Uh, bombarded by all this negativity and all this, you know, sad stuff that's going on around us. No, I agree. How can those listening or watching um, learn more about you or learn more about your business? Sure. Uh, our website is devance.tv, which you did for us, which is another plug. And uh, there you go. 
Devance.tv. Um, and I, I can't tell you, uh, this is not anything you asked me to say, but your team has done, been fantastic through the process. We just got your new website that, you know, that you put together over the last you know, year or so. Uh, we had you do that website for us. You do all of our marketing for us today. Um, you and I did speak about this before we came live on when you're going through tough times like this, what is something that you feel is necessary as a company and you don't want to cut out as, as far as budget goes. Yeah. We did talk about maybe talking about, you know, people are figuring out what do they cut and what do they keep in their businesses right. when they're under stress. And oddly enough, my CFO was the one that said the business we're doing with one firefly is something that we do not cut. Um, we Stephanie, I'm sending Stephanie. you flowers. That is definitely <laughs> flowers worthy. <laughs> and so she said, you know, they're very vital to our business. Keep them going. Um, yeah. So I, there's going to be a lot of tough decisions that business owners have to make. But hopefully um, with these type of podcasts you're putting on, they can hear from other business owners and this, the decisions that we're making and help them uh, with their choices. Uh, I would say that our choice of keeping your services going um is an easy one because it's just going to help us in the long run and, and hopefully other business owners, if they're not doing business with you, maybe they have somebody else they're doing business with that's taking care of them, that they continue that service with whoever they're using um, because it will help in the long run. No. Awesome. I, and, and I, that is a, a very kind words, very gracious, appreciate those thoughts and feelings. Uh, and it is mutual. You, you've built an amazing team. And I know my team really enjoys interacting and working with your team. And, yeah. uh, and I, I say that, I don't say that lightly. I, I, I won't mention names, but I had to fire a customer yesterday because they weren't nice to work with. Yeah. And uh, you never want to do that, especially when the my economy is so weird and bad. But at the end of yeah. the day, time is finite. Uh, and, you know, I want to be around both my family, my friends, my employees, my customers. I want to be around people I enjoy being around. Yeah. Why do anything else? Yeah. And, and especially our time is valuable. And why have this time with everything else that's going on, have more stresses put on top of it? It's Get a choice. Of- and yeah. and I know you choose, you know, the the people you spend time with and, and we do the same here at One Firefly. So again, we wish you guys tremendous success for the balance of 2020. And And Matt, thanks for being on the show, sir. Happy to have you or happy to be here and thank you for having me and I've enjoyed it. And and hopefully people can look at this, other integrators or other business owners, and it'll give them some insight. Awesome. Folks, there you have it. Episode number 119 of Automation Unplugged. Thank you for all you folks that are, are still tuned in. We, we kept a pretty steady audience. Obviously, Matt, uh, has quite the following. And uh, I know he and Dana are, and his whole team are just tremendously respected in the industry. And uh, they've built quite a name and reputation for themselves. So uh, it was uh, an honor to have uh, Matt on the show. And I, I have been in that theater where he's talked about the, the acoustical panels on the wall. And he gave, um, I want to say, Kendall, Allison, and myself quite the audio demo. Uh, he had these monster Macintosh speakers in there. I forgot to ask him if he still had them, but, uh, he, he gave us, uh, quite the demo when we were there. I want to say back in November for our video shoot. And, uh, it was very memorable. And in fact, I took a lot of his demo songs and added them to my, uh, my title playlist here in my house when I'm demoing music. So, uh, anyway, on that note, I'm going to sign off. Uh, be well, have a, a fun and relaxing weekend. Tune in next week for more shows. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to go to your favorite podcast platform and search Automation Unplugged and subscribe. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>